Welcome to Tidbit Talkin'. This is a series that consists of spewing out assorted thoughts which arose from somebody who thinks too much, taking in, and generally loving various entertainment media by the boatload. These tidbits may be little theories, observations, or simply jokes. Please bear in mind that all these ideas come from the perspective of somebody who's experienced every main story bit connected with whatever is currently being gone over. So spoilers will be here. However, other works set in a shared continuity will typically solely be referenced in a way that only makes sense to anybody who's also fully experienced those ones up until their same time occurring points. Sort of a coded nod kind of deal. Now, with all of that out of the way, here we go. In addition to those coded nod kind of deals, this video assumes you know this Superman's history up through the point of Supergirl that preceded this series. So a little more not-so-detailed spoilers there. Man of Steel. Clark's cochlea content crushing childhood crisis came about because suddenly dealing with the absurdly amplified already awful noises of tractors and other farm equipment, alongside also absorbing an apparent ally assessment avalanche all about awkwardness arising from that kind of weird kid who wasn't raised by birth parents, really sucked. That Lex Luthor biography writer is most likely unwaveringly confident about the dude not having children because he's aware how said self-savoring CEO slayed his own father as a child. The aforementioned author wouldn't expose his savagely smug scribbled stuff star since said fellow would have either bribed him or just at least implied some more personal offense related life ending was about to commence. On Iron's Earth, Superman would have never gotten the famous Man of Steel moniker because Lois Lane didn't think of it for him since it was already reserved for her metalwork invested husband. Also, even before he started massacring everybody and taking over the world, she knew that dude kinda sucked. Holding the wrench. Talro planting freaky fierceness fueled folks at the DOD and or Daily Planet who regularly utilized their super hearing would be how he found out about Clark Kent and Kal-El being a single individual. The kryptonite spear was John Henry's favorite weapon because it could allow him to strike superpowered foes down from a relatively safe emergency flea allowing distance while still letting him see some last moment contained homeworld tormentor facial agony hoopla. Irons erasing that Luthor profile will never occur until he felt at least somewhat trusting of this world Superman because doing so also gets rid of many Kryptonian defeat related battle plans and automated defense measures like what almost killed Jonathan. Which, aside from the near accidental child slaughter part, was all stuff that felt perfectly natural and necessary for him after dealing with an alien arranged apocalypse for so long. Loyal subjects. Lois probably accompanied Clark at least once when he got that heat beam based kryptonite explosion done on himself and knew exactly how much pain it entailed. Hence her still being extremely distraught when learning of Jordan needing it despite knowing that it absolutely does work. Those meetings with Edge in the morning must be rehearsals for the Kryptonians that solely focus upon how to convincingly mimic whoever they are inhabiting. The sacrificial candidates Edge chose must be people who are well known around town but not so complex that nobody else could ever literally fill their shoes. Basically, he set things up so his minions could really hammer in a everything is normal vibe with their performances. The guy wouldn't consider taking people who are sorta of outliers because those are the kind of folks with lives that might involve only a few really close friends. Specifically, ones capable of actually spotting offness related junk quite quickly. Of course, those other more socially widespread folks mentioned a bit earlier would have individuals in their lives who could figure such things out, but the general public not doing so generates enough doubt that such others are themselves concerning internal questioning gets rushed aside almost immediately. Oh mother, where art thou? That going out the back Clark mentioned at his family's DOD filled farm probably involved flying away from a designated point General Lane told those troops they could never be anywhere near. Relatively less aged subjects like the one at this diner are an experiment by Tao to see if getting installed at a younger age results in more powerful Kryptonian presences in both a physical and mental sense. Also, learning about his nephew Jordan's budding powers probably inspired this particular twisted idea. A brief reminiscence in between cataclysmic events. Given that long ago, one particular Justice Society of America in this universe already made superpowered folks a known possibility, Lois Lane, coining her future husband's official world-saving name focuses more on his personality rather than what he can do. Specifically, she sees this dude as an exceptionally above-the-norm person because he went out his way to read articles filled with someone's heart and soul instead of merely patrolling randomly all day long. Jordan being born first might involve him developing a wee bit of above-average strength during self-control lacking early life periods that he used to shove his brother aside on reflex. Also, he'd instinctively been driven to do this because his Kryptonian genetics want to experience some of that sweet direct sunlight action as soon as possible. Talro knew about the twins before directly witnessing his bro's cherished memories. He simply wasn't sure just how much Clark cared about his human family before due to all that sons don't know secrets related bullcrap. Zeta's torture level pain inflicting training device seems to be a perversion of Jor's kryptonite removing beam. 
Yes. Through the valley of death. That overwhelming sense of letting go would be better. How experience would be generated from the Eradicator working its body snatching science magic by proving original shell inhabitants are undeniably worse than those newly arrived, much more civilized, and helpful potential having alien minds. Basically, the extreme opposite of self affirming exercises. People at Smallville's local hardware stores must have started developing extra strong spray paint after the local graffiti artist got sick of a young Clark undoing their work constantly. Small businesses really can't afford losing regular customers, even ones more stingy members of their communities may look down upon. Iron Steel Suit must have gone through some upgrade modifications that let its normal arm swings accelerate the Kinect hammer enough to simulate those Superman blow mimicking long travel consisting boomerang throws. John Henry getting through to Clark isn't just because all that stuff he learned about the guy's family left an everlasting impression that rendered him all reaching this dude capable. On top of this sheer emotional might causing new ally persuasion oomph, Zod's mental emotional defenses would be quite weakened because the bad general can't stand how Kal-El is so forgiving of his foes. Fail safe. Tal's probably stewing in that seemingly agonizingly painful red sunlight powered kryptonite cell willingly because he wants his own mind relatively feeble, so taking in the whole Eradicator can be done much more quickly. The Eradicator. That girl who moved from Central City two years ago may have been someone placed in witness protection after a certain meta serial killer got far along enough in his twisted journey. John experiencing extra guilt about Jordan's kidnapping is because his failure to make things should be different sort of plans beyond saving Lois has left him feeling all overwhelmingly selfish and whatnot. In other words, he might see himself just like the Kryptonians he so adamantly hated. Last Sons of Krypton. Lois got inspired to get into her kid Jordan's mind because she knows of another journalist in a different superhero filled city who did something similar. Zeta just wants that six person or so defense council risen first instead of an entire army because Kal-El's earlier Zod resisting showed him going too big would be an incredible risk before Earth was entirely taken over. After all that's already been lost, he can't really afford some extremely bad luck that consists of approximately half his army's meat puppets immediately dominating those resurrected like him minds. Clark directs the question about people being afraid of Kryptonians exclusively towards himself because he doesn't want his cousin getting extra negative attention after all those scandals she's already been through during her relatively short career. Unsorted general season thoughts. Most non-Clark people won't mention Kara, because the crazily destructive, sometimes mind-controlled filled battle she's been through, alongside giving off a sort of been there, done that original version's all I need vibe to some people, has rendered Supergirl sorta unpopular outside National City. Superman's first post-crisis heat vision utilization was still blue-white. It being red now might have something to do with the atom causing some shrinkage wackiness for him. After all, the Maiden of Might never got tiny and hers stayed the same. Endings are a pain, but all of you are fantastic. See ya.